Ladies and gentlemen, the Shred Gaming Center Com video. We're going to be discussing a recent interview by the indie developer Witchbeam. Now they are currently creating a title known as Assault Android Cactus, which I grant you is a fairly odd name, but in which they have said a couple of really interesting uh, points. So the title is being released on Steam, the Wii U, the PlayStation 4, and the PS Vita but not on the Xbox One. And so they were asked, why is this? What was the reasoning? And Satanda said, and I quote, well, when we looked at the, into the Xbox situation around E3, there was simply no way for us to release on the platform without giving up our independence. Microsoft didn't want to deal with a small indie like us. Now, we're locked in on six platforms and too busy to even consider adding a seventh. If this was always their plan, as they claimed, I have one, I have to wonder why they didn't mention anything about it until a few weeks ago, even to the interested developers. Just in case, uh, out of quote, just in case any of you guys are not exactly familiar with that, of course he is discussing the Xbox One's indie plans where beforehand they required a third-party publisher so in other words you can go out to microsoft you can say that you have your gum your game funded you could say that you have the advertising budget you could say that your game has been successful you could say that you've sold a million copies well okay i exaggerate but you could say that it was very successful on the pc just for example and you could say that all they want to do is port it over to the xbox one or whatever and they have all the tools to do it Microsoft will say, that's real nice of you, but you're going to have to go for a third party. And then you argue, well, I don't need them. They're just going to take cuts of my profits and they're not going to do anything. No, no, you just go over there now. And Microsoft have since said, well, it was our plan all along. You know, we've been planning to switch over and we understand that. And basically he's saying, well, I don't really understand why... Um, they didn't say that they were going to be changing their policies before. And I don't necessarily agree with that because Microsoft for a while were were kind of saying that they were going to change things um, in interviews and so on. I just think they were too slow to do it. And I think just like any large organization, it takes a long time to kind of change direction of the cruise liner, if you will. I do admit, however, that they have lost a couple of really cool looking indie games simply because of this, because of pretty much the beta answers. Anyway, um, there was also a question on the unified architecture and the 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM inside the PlayStation 4. Um, and it was answered that, honestly, we're still too early to be talking about the pros and cons of the hardware choices. The PS4 is more than powerful enough to create the experience we want with Cactus, and that's all that matters. However, out of quote, of course, just a hair later in the interview that was asked, Gaijin Entertainment, who are the developers of War Thunder, recently claimed the PS4's GPU is 40% more powerful than the Xbox One. What are your thoughts on this? Furthermore, has the PS4 GPU eased out the number of things you can do on screen in Assault Andro Andro Android Cactus? Gosh, that name just sounds wrong to say. Anyway, uh, Sanatana replied, from a pure tech perspective, it's undeniable that the PlayStation 4 GPU will make it the most powerful console in the world. And for us, that means we can turn on every visual figure, uh, flourish, I'm sorry, every visual flourish we want while keeping a smooth and responsive 60 frames per second. We're focused on every version running at 60 frames per second, including the Vita. Frame rate is king, end quote. Now, if you're hoping for him to uh, mention what resolution the game is running, I'm afraid, well, we don't know. Quite simple as that. We have absolutely no idea what resolution the title is running at, um, as far as I understand. But there you have it. I mean, this developer is saying that the PS4's GPU is definitely making it the most powerful console currently on the market. For all we know, of course, six months later, 
and Nintendo could well unveil another console or you know whatever other you know developer could. Obviously, we're not going to be counting Steambox in this because that's just unfair because they're basically using, uh, for the most part, off-the-shelf PC parts. And well, you know, if you wanted to, you could use something like you know a Titan with basically five T flops of computing power. So it's just not fair to. Uh, use those kind of comparisons but they are saying that the PS4 is the most powerful um, I don't particularly think there's anything new and shiny in those statements I don't think that we're learning anything else I think that even Microsoft have somewhat admitted that their system is going to be less powerful than the PlayStation 4 that doesn't necessarily mean that the console is worse, as we all know. In fact, it doesn't mean it at all. There's been tons of instances where the lower end console, the lower spec console, has kicked the higher spec console's ass. I'm not going to bother to reel them off because I'm sure that most of you will be aware of systems like the Game Boy, the original Game Boy versus the Game Gear. And if not, then you can just do a bit of Googling. But suffice to say that it seems to be a fairly unanimous uh, comment that both systems are powerful but the PS4 seems a little bit more powerful in terms of the GPU I'm still uncertain, uh, uncertain. I'm still doing a analysis of series if you will on the uh, memory and ESRAM and other assets of the Xbox One versus the PlayStation 4 what I'd really like from a developer and I am referring not to a developer who has a vested interest in either system. I'd really like a developer to not actually answer the question, which system is more powerful. I would actually like them to answer some questions regarding how easy it is to get the most performance out of both systems comparatively rather than just saying well the PS4 is easy to work with or the Xbox One is pretty easy to work with or whatever I'd really like there's so many questions that are still unanswered and I have a feeling that those are going to have to wait a while anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the relatively brief video but I'm going to get going I'll see you soon take care bye for now